I want to talk today about Winston Churchill because Piers Morgan is getting all gammony and raging about it as he does, as he does about everything. But um, the reason he's angry is because people are saying that Winston Churchill was an empirical war criminal. So that isn't, un, that isn't a deniable fact. This is observable truth. He starved to death millions in India. He slapped down Welsh miners. In fact, he's quoted as saying about the Welsh miners who were on hunger strike. If they don't want food, we'll fill their bellies with lead. He is quoted as saying about the Indians. I hate the Indians. They're a beastly people with a beastly religion and the famine that they are experiencing is their own fault for breeding like rabbits. This man was a demonstrable racist. He was a demonstrable bigot. He hated the Indians. He said it himself. He forcibly terrorised the Welsh miners. He rolled out the blacks and tans who terrorised people in Ireland and Wales. He facilitated Wahhabism and Zionism in the Middle East. Two ideologies that are conflictly opposed to each other, directly opposed to each other. So the entire Middle Eastern crisis, you could argue, is partially down to Winston Churchill, because he was the one, or one of the people, that carved up the Middle East and gave parts of it to the Zionists and left the rest for the Wahhabists. In fact, it's quite odd to see, from the, on the hard way, many people supporting this man, because this is the man in 1945, after the end of the First World, uh, Second World War, sorry, this is the man who spoke about a United States of Europe. This is the man who first advocated a European Union and a European army. This is the man who put forth the idea in the first place for an EU. So all these hard right conservative voting or UKIP voting Brexiteers who hold Churchill up as this ideal man, as this, as this brilliant leader, are completely failing to notice that he actually supported the European Union. Now this, this man, this character is divisive. That's fact. That is a statement of truth. Many people love him, many people despise him. I believe he deserves credit for keeping morale high during the Second World War. Credit where credit is due. However, we also need to look at his harsher side, his nastier side. For instance, starving to death millions in, in India, for using the black and tans to terrorise the Welsh and the Indians, facilitating Zionism and Wahhabism in the Middle East. This, this, he was not a true British hero. He was someone who rode on the back of the British Empire, terrorised innocent people, bullied people, and made bigoted statements regarding those people. He was not this all-American, all-British, sorry, hero, soldier, warrior. Yes, he was good during the Second World War. He was good with, with a charisma. He had a charisma with the V for Victory stuff. He was good with that. You have to give credit where credit is true. But conversely, you have to acknowledge the negative sides of his character. So I really, really don't understand why people are so upset when someone says Winston Churchill was a war criminal. This is fact. This is history. You can't gloss over the ugly bits of history that you don't, don't like looking at. You can't just gloss over it and ignore it and look at all the great stuff. You have to look at it both sides. So for instance, if you're looking at the British Empire in India, you have to look at both sides. So you, you have to look at the starvation of millions of people, the famines and all this kind of stuff, and, and the negativity and the oppression of the Indian native people. You also have to look at the positive things that came out of that, both for India and for us. Railways, you know, cuisine that we, we inherited and culture that we adopted as part of that. You have to look and weigh the scales evenly. So for, for someone to look at Winston Churchill and not be awestruck by this hero and not be, you know, hero worshipping this man is, that's not wrong. That's actually quite good. It's actually quite a good thing that you're looking at this person and you're balancing the scales. And if you think he's a war criminal, you have every right in the British public space to come forward and say Winston Churchill was a war criminal. 
You have every right to come out and say that. This, that that's what free speech is all about. So it's ironic that people like Piers Morgan would get upset that somebody is saying Churchill wasn't the great hero that he's made out to be by many of the British people. It's ironic that Piers Morgan would get upset about it because people like Piers Morgan are always the first ones to say free speech whenever someone says something that could be construed as racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, etc. Piers Morgan, Katie Hopkins, all those people, all those right wing speakers in the public eye in Britain are always the first ones to say free speech, but criticise their hero, Winston Churchill, criticise one of their heroes, and they will cry about it. And they will throw a fit and throw a tantrum. Free speech works for everyone. So if you've got the free speech to say something that I construe as racist, I've got the free speech to tell you I think that's racist. And then for you to cry, free speech after that doesn't prove anything. You're not proving a point. You're just saying, I have the right to say it. Well, I have the right to tell you you're a fucking moron if you say something that I perceive as stupid. Conversely, if I'm saying anything in this video that you construe as stupid, you have every right to drop a comment and call me a mug. Every right is free speech. I'll make a point on my YouTube channel of not deleting any comments, of not censoring anybody, any language. It's all fair game by me. Just go and look at my Jada Moody video where you've got people throwing racial slurs about black people around. I didn't delete any of those comments. I will not delete any of those comments because I believe that free speech exists and it is necessary. So those comments will sit there. And I have, I have replied to many of those comments telling the people who commented how disgusting their views are. And those comments will sit there. All free speech means is you have the right to say what you want and nobody can censor you or oppress you for it. Nobody is trying to censor or oppress anybody making racist statements or making statements that people could construe as racist. Nobody is trying to stop you saying women should be in the kitchen or gays carry AIDS or whatever you want to say about these people. What we're doing is we're telling you what you're saying is wrong and bigoted and hurtful and it harms our feelings and it, you know, we're trying to tell you you're an idiot and we have every right to say that. It's, so it's quite ironic that when someone criticises Churchill, oh, you're crying about it, oh, you shouldn't, he's, a, he's a hero. No. No matter what you say, just stop the argument because free speech. We have the free speech to tell you Winston Churchill was a war criminal who starved millions to death, terrorised with the blacks and tans, terrorised the Irish and the Welsh and all this other stuff. So right, freedom of speech. Conversely, conversely, no. Subsequently, we also have freedom of speech to tell you you're wrong about immigration, to tell you that not all Muslims are terrorists. We have the free speech. If you're going to argue free speech, you have to apply it to the other side as well. Otherwise, you're a fucking major hypocrite. That's it. Winston Churchill. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.